Hey guys, Darren Asbury here with Revival Outdoors, bringing you another exciting podcast. Tonight, we're going to go back to the great state of Maryland. Uh, we're going to interview Mr. Uh, Andrew Hively. Andrew's actually from Pennsylvania, so uh, very interesting. He got a top five finish last year at the BFL Northeastern Division event on the Potomac River. Um, so we're very excited to talk to Andrew, what he predicts for this year's tournament, how he was able to accomplish his top five finish from last year. So a lot of great content coming your way. You don't want to miss it. Before we get started, Revital Outdoors is very excited to announce we are doing a $2,500 giveaway for a lucky angler at the end of the year. All you have to do to enter that giveaway is hit the link at the top of the description right below this video. This $2,500 giveaway package is not one any angler is going to want to miss. We've got great companies such as Flambeau, Seaguar Line, and Costa Del Mar on board with this. We're working on some other great companies. Um, so you don't want to miss this. Just takes three seconds to enter your information. Click that link at the top of the description. I promise you, you're not going to uh want to miss this also subscribe to our youtube channel if you haven't already that way you get notified when all of our content is dropping check us out on facebook and instagram that's for vital outdoors also don't forget this coming mother's day is this sunday and for mother's day we are featuring a 30 percent off discount on our cbd soft gel with melatonin so that's our cbd soft gels that help you sleep better at night it supports a better night's sleep it doesn't give you that groggy hangover the next day it's one of my favorite products. It's a great product for mom. She's always trying to keep up with us. She's dealing with all the different headaches that we put her through. So do yourself a favor. Get mom the uh, CBD uh, soft chills with melatonin from our website. You can purchase all of our products on our website at www.revitaloutdoors.com. And don't forget our products are THC free made right here in America. That being said, let's go ahead and bring Andrew right into the studio. Mr. Andrew Hively from the great state of Pennsylvania. How are you doing this evening, bud? Good, man. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Well, first question, how far of a drive is it from PA to uh, the Potomac River? Uh, for me, it's about two and a half to three hours, um, depending on okay. traffic. Luckily, I mean, it depends if we do a tournament in the morning and I leave, you know, one and two in the morning, get there for the tournament, or I stay, you know, fish a couple days before and, you know, it's just from the hotel. So that's generally what I do. I got you. I got you. Well, uh, really cool, man. Uh, I think you're the first PA angler we've talked to, so really great to talk to you, Northeastern angler. So tell us a little bit about your tournament last year on the Potomac River. Again, that top five finish with the Northeastern Division BFL tournament. You know, what kind of – what happened last year? Uh, so pretty much um, with the Potomac last year, um, it, there was a lot of grass came up. I think the tournament was a little later, if I recall. Um <laughs> And the grass had already came in. Um, the fish, I believe, were um, after the spawn already. Um, we were catching swim jigs, chatter baits. Um, I don't know if you've ever been to the Potomac River um, and the other tidal fisheries around here, like the Chesapeake. Uh, the boats get grouped up. And when the patches have fish in them of grass, they load up and there's boats everywhere. Everyone's trying to pick fish off. and kind of you have to find the spot within the spot and that's kind of what i did there right right so i actually have been to the potomac a couple of times great fishery love it one of the best cinco wacky worm fisheries in the planet i also love throwing a frog there there's two things i really like about the potomac river and one thing i really need to be successful in in bettering my tournaments on the potomac river i'm sure every angler will agree with me uh number one um, I need to learn how to be a better tidal fisherman. Uh, you know, that's just one thing I kind of like about it. I like the challenge of the tides, but yep. the tides are everything year round. Uh, the other thing I really like about the Potomac River is you can kind of really do whatever you want. You got guys going offshore in the main river, uh, fishing the offshore grass with chatter baits, um, reaction baits. You got guys, you know, up shallow flipping, throwing frogs, fishing docks. So it's really, really cool. What I need is an access card into Quantico. If I could just land yes. that access card for one day, we'd be all right. Yeah, I hear you there. Now, <laughs> back when you could fish that, that stuff was really good. And like you said, you can literally do anything you want there. You can go um, square bill and rock piles. You can fish grass out in the middle. You can fish docks. It's really anybody's ball game. And you could be sitting there at 2 o'clock, weigh in at 3 o'clock, and within 20 minutes you have 20 pounds in the boat. And it just happens that you hit the right spot at the right time. When right. it clicks, it clicks down there. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and one thing outside of fishing, it's got the most ferocious ospreys you've ever seen in the country. Oh, they dive oh. bomb you. They really do. 
Oh yeah, you, you cannot throw. Down. It's hard to throw a top water. If you make a really long cast up shallow with a whopper plopper or any kind of uh, top water bait like a spook, they're gonna come after it. That's just fact. Oh, every time, every time. That's all awesome. <laughs> sure. So, uh, well, walk us through your tournament a little bit last year. You know, obviously top five finish. What were you able to find successful? Were you keying in on the spawn, the post spawn? Like what kind of what was happening? Um, I believe. Like I said, I think we was after the spawn, the post spawn there, and the fish were kind of still grouped up. Um, I found a grass patch on the edge, and I was just running up and down the same grass patch repeatedly. And I'd go up one, maybe catch one or two fish, and I'd spin back around and I'd get them again. It didn't matter the tide; they just happened to be grouped up in there, and they were chasing. Um, I was getting them swim jigs, chatter baits. Um, and then when it would really slow down, you just, like you said, you throw a Senko in there and they take off with it. You're sitting for a while, but you know, that's what you have to do sometimes. Right. Right. So, you know, looking forward to this tournament this year, do you suspect the same kind of thing? I know the tournament last year was a little later. Um, I predict just talking to other anglers, I think there's going to be a lot more guys trying to key in on that low tide, chasing after the spawning fish. There's going to be guys that are just hell-bent on chasing the post-spawners. There's a multitude of different ways anglers are going to catch fish. For you, Andrew, what are you comfortable with this time of year? What's kind of your, you know, let's say you're starting practice on Friday. What are you going to be keen on first? Yeah, so first off with the Potomac right now, it seems everything is about a week or two behind. Um, the water temps are still pretty cold. I mean, you have, if you're up north, you have temperatures like 56, 58 surface temperature and then as you go south you get into the 60 62 so i personally think they're still all uh pre-spawn you might find some spawners out there somewhere uh, maybe if you go pretty south but i personally think it's going to be one of them deals where they can move up as of tomorrow like with this week we have warm weather all week and we have a cold front coming in this weekend it might be a little windy so it's going to change things up for people but, I mean, in the past, we've had tournaments where, like right now, a local tournament just had 18 pounds, and that's a team tournament. And for this time of year, you get, you get up to 27-pound bags. So those big bags could come any day, and I'm thinking that there's a chance it could be this tournament. Okay, I got you. I got you. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like the moon's going to help you out at all this weekend. No, I don't think we're going to get the help of the moon, but I think these fish have been waiting for a while now since mm -hmm. the last full moon because the temperature has been pretty stable i mean in the high 50s so there's a chance they're just looking for a little bit of warmth to kind of just even just get another wave to come up maybe not spawn but at least move up even more i mean some of them fish are still white so they're not they haven't been up yet they're just pushing up okay in terms of like bait selection what are are you like a running gun throw reaction baits are you up, you know, flipping shallow? Give us an idea, kind of in a ballpark, what do you predict anglers are going to do well on this weekend? Um, I mean, you have your typical baits. Like if you're doing moving baits, you're going to have your um, your spinner baits, your chatter baits, your swim jigs, um, maybe some rattle traps and crank baits mixed in. I know the guys fishing um, the rock stuff, they'll be doing that. And then when you're a lot of guys slow down, like you said, they use that the Senko, you're fishing jigs swim jigs and shaky heads and drop shots actually get pretty pretty widely used out there when when you get in those big groups a lot of people put spinning rods in their hands and kind of try to finesse them i got you i got you so you know that's kind of funny you mentioned the finesse game because if you look at the you know, big tournaments in the years past i'm talking the bassmaster elite series when um J uh justin lucas won it i think it was 2016 in 2015, you had Clark Wentland win the FLW Tour event there. There was a BFL All-American there held in 2018, I believe. Yeah, All of those guys had a spinning rod in their hand at one point. Yeah, no, it really does play. I mean, Justin Lucas has especially kind of put a certain bait on the map there. I'm not going to name the bait, but I'm sure everyone knows, with a drop shot. Um, and, I mean, everybody that I get as a co-angler seems to have it on. So it's one of them deals that – it's just kind of familiar to everybody and everyone's kind of doing the same thing. And it's just figuring out the timing and where the fish are. Absolutely. For all the anglers out there talking about, or know what Andrew's talking about, 
that bait don't work anymore. Um, ever since COVID hit, I don't know what it is yeah. about that drop shot bait, but don't buy any. Um, just leave them in stock and tackle warehouse. Um, they don't work. So just just move on to different. You know, I personally like throwing like a Magnum Old Monster on a drop shot. Get that 14 incher on there. Um, You're it looking really, for the right fish with that. <laughs> yeah, it does wonders for sure. So uh, no, I'm just kidding. You know that that bait will, will be remained uh, nameless, but he really did show us something. And it didn't help that he really broke it down on camera, what he did there. And it's, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's like something people don't talk about that live there locally. The locals don't talk about what he did. No, no, a lot of people don't. And, I mean, I will say he was north. Um, and yeah. that that is kind of, it has its moments up there. And you don't have grass once you move up north. It's more structure-oriented. Um, there used to be grass. It seemed to have dwindled out. And I mean, will it play? I mean, it always does. Um, so it's just a matter of, you know, will someone tell you that's what they're doing? Not sure. Right. Right. I got you. I got you. So what do you think weight wise it's going to take this weekend? We got a lot of different factors going in. Sounds like a lot of guys are going to be catching fish with bloody tails. Um, you think the normal 15, 16 pound range will win it? Do you think, do you predict bigger bags? I predict bigger bags. I think you're going to have probably, like I said, that team tournament was 18 pounds, and that's a lot of local guys fishing. But right. say they do move up a little bit more, I think you're going to have 19, 20 pounds and the possibility of 20 plus, you know, 24, 25 pounds. We've seen it in the past. I know I, with a second place, I had um, a 19 something, and Joe Zombach had 24 pounds and there was a battle series across at least Sylvania, which they came in with 27 pounds. So it just shows you the fireworks can go off at any moment. Absolutely. You know, one last question before we let you go, Andrew, actually I got two more questions, but one in particular, you mentioned the drop shot. You mentioned the shaky hit for a co-angler. Let's say they're taking one more rod. What would you take as a co-angler in this event? I think you have to take a chatterbait um, with the grass and, even if you're not in grass, I mean, I've seen people behind me and I've done it myself. You can fish them in docks and they react to it. I mean, it's similar to a square bill. So I'd say square bill or chatterbait. I got you. I got you. So, well, Andrew, you've given us a lot of great insight to the Potomac River. Again, congratulations on your finish last year. Hope to see you repeat that success. Hope to see you win it because that usually means we get to do a repeat podcast and that's always a great thing. So uh, that being said, before we let you go, I checked out your social media. Man, you got a lot of great family up there in PA, a lot of great friends that support you in your fishing endeavors. Um, you're doing it right, man. I just want to say for all the listeners out there, this man is doing it right because Andrew is not all about the sponsors or, you know, basically chasing the spotlight, if you will. He just loves fishing. You can see that with his, uh, with his social media. He's not just a bass fisherman. He, he's a through and through a, an angler. So, Andrew, that being said, thank you for, you know, just being a, you know, a lover of the outdoor, out of the outdoors and being a great outdoor enthusiast, but I know you don't do it alone. So anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? Yeah. Uh, I'd like to shout out my fiance, Leanne, um, my family, my dad, my mom, um, a bunch of friends. I had a friend last year, Chris Patton, lent me his boat in a tournament down there at the Potomac in the ABA. So I've had a lot of, you know, close people help me out throughout the, the years here to keep me moving. And, you know, it just it's fun. It makes everything uh, go easier. And, you know, like you said, fishing at the end of the day, it's fun and we love to do it. So absolutely. So, Andrew, really appreciate your insight to the Potomac River on this podcast. Thank you for joining us uh, from all of us at Revital Outdoors. Good luck to Andrew fishing the Northeastern Division BFL tournament this coming weekend. Good luck to all, to all the anglers fishing that tournament. Uh, be safe out there, guys. Uh, remember why we're here. Remember to enjoy fishing. Before we let everybody go, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, you've been watching this rotating banner at the uh, bottom of the screen. Hit that link at the top of the description right below this video. That enters you in for our $2,500 giveaway. Again, that lucky angler will be selected at the end of the year. From all of us at Revital Outdoors, I'm Theron Asbury. Thank you for tuning in to this podcast. Be safe out there. God bless, and we'll see everyone very, very soon. Thanks. Take care.